Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Leaving the Farm right here on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. Remember, we're a listener-supported radio station, so please, if you'd like to donate to freedomslips.com, please go to our Support Us page right here on our website. Tonight's episode of Leaving the Farm, we're going to call it Poof, I Found You. Let us start. We're going to start with the letters patent of King Henry the Seventh, granted unto John Cabot and his three sons, Louis, Sebastian, and Sanctius, for the discovery of new and unknown lands. Henry, by the grace of God, King of England and France and Lord of Ireland, to all to whom these presents shall come greetings. Be it known that we have given and granted, and by these presents do give and grant for us and our heirs, to our well-beloved John Cabot, citizen of Venice, to Louis, Sebastian, and Sanctius, sons of the said John, and to the heirs of them, and every of them, and their deputies, full and free authority, lee, and power to sail to all parts, countries, and seas of the east, and of the west, and of the north, under our banners and ensigns. This is piracy, by the way, under the flag. <clears throat> With fine ships of what burthen or quality soever they be, and as many mariners or men as they will have with them in the said ships, upon their own power, costs, and charges, to seek out, discover, and find whatsoever isles, countries, regions, or provinces of the heathen and infidels, whatsoever they be, and in what part of the world soever they be, which before this time has been unknown to all Christians. Wait a second. That indicates that Christianity is finding you. We have granted to them and also to every of them, the heirs of them and every of them and their deputies, and have given them license to set up our banners and ensigns in every village, towns, castle isle, or mainland of them newly found. And that the aforesaid John and his sons or their heirs and assignees may subdue, occupy, and possess all such towns, cities, castles, and isles of them so found, which they can subdue, occupy, and possess as our vassals. That is not speaking of a geographical state. Let's go to the etymology on vassal. A vassal is a tenant who pledges fealty to a lord, calls it father. And I'll read that again. And that the for aforesaid John and his sons to their heirs and assignee may subdue, occupy, and possess all towns, cities, castles, and isles of them found, which they can subdue, occupy, and possess as our vassals and lieutenants getting unto us the rule, title, and jurisdiction of the same villages, towns, castles, and firm land so found. Yet so that the foresaid John and his sons and heirs and their deputies be holden and bounder of all the fruits, profits, gains, and commodities growing of such navigation, for every their voyage, as often as they shall arrive at our port of Bristol, at the which port they shall be bound and holden only to arrive, all manner of necessary costs and charges by them made, being deducted to pay unto us in wares or money the lift, lift part of the capital gain so gotten, we gluing and gra granting unto them and to their heirs and deputies that they shall be free from all paying of customer of all and singular such merchandise as they shall be free from all paying of customers of all and singular they shall bring with them from those places so newly found. Now, instead of being a singular holder of this debt and charges, they're going to enter into an insurance contract, mutual insurance, guarantee insurance, uh, fiduciary insurance. This is all founded on insurance and finding you, the lost heathen and infidel, with the use of religion, mainstream religion or religious indoctrination. Now, to be found by Christianity, you must be given a new family or genus name, a Christian name. Washington, for example, literally means a state of a man named Wasa, which will bring us to our, quote, forefathers, of course. Washington meaning a state of the name of Wasa. Adams is something quite profound. The etymology on Adams simply means mankind. Then we have Jeffers' son, Maddie's son, 
The Monroe Doctrine refers to principles of policy contained in the message of U.S. President James Monroe to Congress on December 2, 1823. This, of course, does not apply to law, but to corporate policy. Next, we're going to delve into the First Charter of Virginia, April 10, 1606. James, by the grace of God, King of England, Scotland, France, and Ireland, Defender of the Faith and Company, whereas our loving and well-disposed subjects, Sir Thorne and Scales and Sir George Summers, Knights, Richard Hucklet, Clerk, Plebendary of Westminster, and Edward Maria Wingfield, Thomas Harnham and Raleigh Gilbert, Esquires, William Parker and George Popham, Gentlemen and Divers, others of our lover our loving subjects have been humble suitors unto us that we would vouchsafe unto them our license to make habitation plantation and to deduce a colony of sundry of our people into that part of america commonly called virginia and other parts and territories in america either appertaining unto us or which are now not now actually possessed by any christian prince or people situate lying and being along the sea coast between four and thirty degrees of northerly latitude from the Aquinaco line and five and forty degrees of the same latitude and in the mainland between the same four and thirty five and forty degrees and the islands here unto it adjacent or within one hundred miles of the coast thereof that is of course naval navigation and to that end, and for the more speedy accomplishment of their said intended plantation and habitation there, are, desire, are desirous to divide themselves into several colonies and companies, the one consisting of certain knights, gentlemen, merchants, and other adventurers of our city of London and elsewhere, which are, and from time to time shall be joined unto them, which to desire to begin their plantation and habitation in some fit and convenient place, between four and thirty and one and forty degrees of the said latitude along the coast of Virginia and the coast of America aforesaid. And the other consisting of sundry knights, gentlemen, merchants, and other adventurers of our city of Bristol and Exeter, and over town of Plymouth and other places which do join themselves unto that colony which do desire to begin their plantation and habitation in some fit and convenient place between eight and thirty degrees and five and forty degrees of the said latitude all along the said coast of Virginia and America as the coast slides. Now they're maintaining the geographical placement as they're picking you up and you're agreeing to this remember because you're patronizing it. And once again this brings us to the etymology of Washington. Literally it means the state of a man named Wassa. And we'll go back to Vassal. A tenant who pledges fealty to a lord. From old French vassal, from medieval Latin vassalus, manservant, domestic retainer. From vassus, servant. From old Celtic wasso, young man or squire. And of course, colony. From Latin colonia, meaning settled land, farm, or landed estate. Washington, or vassal, or wasso. Which brings us to territory, land under the jurisdiction of a town, state, etc. From terra, meaning earth, land, plus orium, denoting a place. So at this point in time, they are taking human beings and making them theirs under their jurisdiction. Now all of this brings us to the second charter of Virginia, May 23, 1609, uh, paragraph 2. Now, for as much as divers and sundry of our loving subjects, vassals, as well adventurers as planters of the said first colony, which have already engaged themselves in furthering the business of the said colony and plantation, and do further intend by the assistance of Almighty God, that's their God, by the way, to prosecute the same to a happy end, have of late been humble suitors unto us, that in respect of our great charges and the adventure of many of their lives, which they have hazarded in the said discovery and plantation of the said country, we should be pleased to grant them a further enlargement and an explanation of the said grant, privileges, and liberties, and that such counselors and other officers may be appointed amongst them to manage and direct their affairs as are willing and ready to adventure with them, 
We also, whose dwelling are not so far remote from the city of London, but they may at convenience time be ready at hand to give their advice and assistance upon all occasions requisite. Now, let's stop here. We need to go look at something else. Now, when they claim something, they call it forts and chases. Uh, this is from the forts and chases in England and Wales, circa 1000 to circa 1850. And that means so much to you. Very specifically, the definition of liberty. Liberty, also known as franchise. The exemption by royal decree from general provisions or regulations, whether judicial, commercial, or ecclesiastical, by which powers could be exercised in appointments made locally, e.g. within manors, by lords, burgesses, clerics, or corporations, or regionally, e.g. within honors, exemptions might also be claimed as prescriptive, i.e. existing from time immemorial, see also palatine. Palatine comes from French palatin, and directly from medieval Latin palatinus, quote, of the palace, or of the Caesars. Again, the Second Charter of Virginia, they're taking your body, your earth, territories, and they're maintaining it to generate revenue for themselves. Paragraph 3. We greatly affecting the effectual prosecution and happy success of the said plantation. Let's go look and see what it says about succession from Black's Law for Sedition. Succession in the civil law and in Louisiana, the fact of the transmission of the rights, estate, obligations, and charges of a deceased person to the, his heir or heirs, the right by which the heir can take possession of the descendant's estate, the right of the heir to step into the place of the deceased with respect to possessions, control, enjoyment, administration, and settlement of all the latter's property, rights, obligations, charges, etc., the estate of a deceased person comprising all kinds of property owned or claimed by him, as well as his debts and obligations, and considered as a legal entity, according to the notion of the Roman law. For certain purposes, such as collecting assets and paying debts, uh, we didn't come from anywhere. Everything was seceded or taken over by those that were taking territories and your earth, Jesus. And I'll read the Second Charter of Virginia, May 23rd, 1609, third paragraph again. We greatly affecting the effectual prosecution and happy success of the said plantation. You've all been made criminal. You're all claiming those names, the Christian names. And here we go. And commending their good desires therein for their further encouragement in accomplishing so excellent a work much pleasing to God, their God, and profitable to our kingdom, their kingdom, due of our special grace and certain knowledge and mere motion for us, our heirs and successors, give, grant, and confirm to our trusty and well-beloved subjects, Robert Earl of Salisbury, Thomas Earl of Suffolk, Henry Earl of Southampton, William Earl of Pembroke, Henry Earl of Lincoln, Earl of Dorset, Thomas Earl of Exeter, Philip Earl of Montgomery, Robert Lord Viscount Lyle, Theophilus Lord Howard Walden, etc., etc., etc. So here you're being given to the last swords or reversioners, correct? Which brings us to the Charter of New England, 1620. James, by the grace of God, King of England, Scotland, France, and Ireland, Defender of the Faith and Company, to all whom these presents shall come greeting. Whereas upon the humble position of divers of our well-disposed subjects that intended to make several plantations in the parts of America between the degrees of 34 and, 30 and 45, we accordingly, according to our princely inclination, favoring much their worthy disposition in hope thereby to advance the enlargement of Christian religion. Now let's stop here, shall we? Enlargement. For Black's Law Dictionary, first edition, enlarge, to make larger, to increase, to extend a time limit, to grant further time, also to set at liberty one who has been imprisoned or in custody. I will go to enlarger the estate. A species of, of release which enters by way of enlarging an estate and consists of a conveyance of their ulterior interest in the particular tenant, as if there be a tenant for life or years, remainder to another in fee, that means your fee, 
and he in remainder releases all of his right to the particular tenant and his heirs. This gives him the estate in fee. So you've been taken by a feudal lord, and you've been called a fee by enlargement. This also increases their geographical location by consent. You are allowing this. Jesus enlarging, extending, or making more comprehensive. That means with a grasping motion, comprehend, as an enlarging statute, which is one extending the common law. Let's go look at something else, shall we? Now, all this time, those people, those same entities, those same uh, laysors and reversioners and everybody else who's granted your estate, taken your estate, they've been uh, perpetrating education on you, teaching you what they want you to know. Okay, let's go to Matthew 23 for a second, though, because this is so profound. Matthew 23, 1. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. But do you not after their works? For they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. They take everything. They take everything, including you, and love the uppermost rooms of feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets. Remember? Greetings. And to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be ye not called Rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all your brethren. And call no man your father upon this earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest amongst you that shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that is shall humble himself shall be exalted. Now I'm going to stop here because you need to see something. That vassal is a tenant who pledges fealty to a lord. You are calling it your father. The Lord God, you're calling it your father. Stop doing that. Stop patronizing it. Patre, calling it your father. This is what Jesus was so adamant about. This is you, Jesus. This is you screaming out from a piece of paper, a document, telling everybody else, stop doing this. Stop doing this. Walk away from it. Get off of the farm. Leave that farm. And we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> Rocco Show, everything legal plus more. You never know what you're going to hear on the Bill and Rocco Show at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. Is there some kind of magic status that will keep you safe from quasi-government intervention? Are there really multiple types of citizens? Doesn't matter if you're a citizen of the national state or the federal state. Is there such thing as a sovereign state? Should you claim constitutional rights? Here at the Bo and Rocco Show, we still maintain divesting off title, do no harm, indict those that do harm as a sovereign state under 28 U.S.C. Chapter 97. You're tuned into freedomslips.com, Revolution Radio. Pa, the GMO tomatoes are eating the sheep. Hold on there, Lucy May. Jump that tax collector keeps calling. Ma, come quick, the chickens are laying eggs and blue things on the shelves, they're twitching and moving. Chicks is a moving, Pa. She got into her doggy dollars again. Dang that dog, I was saving those for me. All right, y'all. Now it's time for Leaving the Farm with Pat and Tammy. And we're back to Leaving the Farm only on Revolution Radio, freedomsubs.com. I'd like to point something out right now. We are a listener-supported radio station, and at this time we're running our, our fun drive. And I want to introduce everybody to the Jumbo Emergency Food Survivor Seed Pack. Get a hot head start on your own food supply with the Survival Seed Pack, containing only non-GMO and non-hybrid seeds. These are fresh and ready for planting. Enclosed in a Mylar heat sealed resealable bag with instructions, these seeds will keep 20 to 25 years frozen 
are 10 to 15 years of refrigerated. These seeds will produce new seeds every planting year, providing you with a fresh seed source for perpetual food year after year. When you're contemplating getting off the grid, leaving the farm, this is so important for you to realize and wrap your head around that you can do this. You can grow your own food. Not only that, they store forever. So you, if you don't use them this year, you can use them next year, 20 years from now frozen. I'd like to talk about the um, supporting our station and what this means to us. This keeps us on the air. Hawk provides us with this space. Hawk pays out every month, no matter what, to keep us on the air. And we're here for you. We're not here for our benefit. None of the hosts are paid. We need to start generating something into Hawk's hands so that we are kept on the air. And this is so important, the Jumbo Emergency Food Survivor Pack, Survival Pack. This comes with a $100 donation. But not only that, Hawk also includes the bonus DVD for you. With the seed kit, you will also get the station's very own survival DVD, which includes over 900 documents about bug out bakes, clothing, combat, communications, cooking, disaster preparedness, food, gardening, general, including tool building and Boy Scouts handbook, poisonous plant guides, hunting, hygiene, livestock, medical, power, shelter, special skills, urban, including urban survival and survival checklists, water, including constructions, pumps, water treatment and purification, wilderness, including traps and snares, plant identification and navigation, and much, much more. All of the above for a $100 donation. I know that these are hard times. We're all going through this. But if you'd like to keep us on the air here at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com, where information never sleeps, please, please consider a donation. Any little bit helps. Now, before the break, we were talking about how you are found when you're lost at sea. Um, let's go forward from 1606, 1609, 1620 into the 1666 Sestri Kevai Act. And this is so amazing, and I would like everybody to hear what actually occurred, what this means to you, and how to get off of the farm, leave the farm. Now, this is your key. 1666 Sestri Kevai Act, an act for redress of inconveniences by want of proof of the diseases of persons beyond the seas or absencing them themselves upon whose lives estates do depend. Recital that the Sestri Kevais have gone beyond the sea and that reversioners cannot find out whether they are alive or dead. Whereas diverse lords of manors and others have granted estates by lease for one or more life or lives, or else for years determinable upon one or more life or lives, and it hath often happened that such person or persons for whose life or lives such estates have been granted, have gone beyond the seas, or so absented themselves for many years, that the lessers and reversioners cannot find out whether such person or persons be alive or dead, by reason whereof such lessers and reversioners have been held out of the possession of their tenements for many years, after all the lives upon such upon which such estates depend are dead, in regard that the lessers and reversioners, when they have brought actions for the recovery of their tenements, have been put upon it to prove the death of their tenants, when it is almost impossible for them to discover the same, for remedy of which mischief so frequently happening to such lessers or reversioners. So basically what's happening is somebody has said, well, you're lost. You keep claiming that Christian name, that new family name. They're finding you your new property, newly found lands, and um, there's redress for this. There's something there that allows you to come back in and claim that estate. Well, how do you do that? Stop claiming the family name. Stop claiming that you're a new genus or species of human being. Get back to one. We are all one. We were all taken over. Uh, we're all vassals, Wasso, Washington, you know. This is so ridiculous that you want to go into court, you want to go pray to another landlord, you want to pray to another Lord God to rectify this situation when in reality it's right in front of you. And, and this is so important. This is what my process is. The process is finding yourself. The question is, do you know the self? Are you going to self-govern? And so many times, so often, somebody comes to me, well, what about my Social Security check? 
Hello, they took your entire estate. Now they're giving you a little stripping. What about my driver's license? Hello, you're you're getting a license to act as that dead thing. You are considered dead. When you get that license, when you get a marriage license, you're entering into contact with them. You're maintaining that you're dead. There's no longer a presumption of death. You're no longer lost, right? Because they found you. And that's how you're being owned. That's how you're being subjugated. You are made subject of them. As the vassal, you're patronizing that thing. You're not going away from it. And this is your due. This is your reward. Your reward of them. Now, appropriations means to take. And so your local community, your local municipality has an appropriations committee, appropriations council. And what's happening is they're taking you. You're lost. They're grabbing you up, picking you up out of the sea of commerce. And this is what happens next. Sister Kivai remaining beyond the sea for seven years together, no proof of their lives. Judge in action to direct a verdict as though Sister Kivai were dead. So upon the taking or appropriations of you and your community, if you don't come in and prove that you're alive or show that you're alive in some way, the judge is going to decla declare you dead. And I'll show you this in U.S. Code right now. This is 38 U.S.C. subsection 108, seven-year absence presumption of death. A. No state law providing for presumption of death shall be applicable to claims for benefits under laws administered by the Secretary of State. B. If evidence satisfactory to the Secretary submitted establishing the continued and unexplained ab absence of any individual for that individual's home and family for seven or more years, and establishing that after diligent search, no evidence of the individual's existence after the date of disappearance has been found or received, the death of such individual as the state of the expiration of such period shall be considered as sufficiently proven. What? The judge can declare you dead if you don't come in and provide evidence of your be living and stop patronizing that thing. And you will be declared dead to the Secretary of State. Now, the Secretary of State is the clearinghouse. Clearinghouse from MiriamWebster.com. Number one, an establishment maintained by banks for settling mutual claims and accounts. Remember, they're not going to take on singular obligation. They're going to enter into mutual insurance. This is very important because it wraps around the bankruptcy laws. They're declaring you dead because you're depraved, bankrupt. You're, you lack everything, and Jesus called this sin. Sin in Latin means without. You are without yourself. You're, you're outside of yourself. You're not functioning as to your, your being. You're functioning as a fictional creation created by legal mechanism. And I urge everybody to read, um, uh, it's called Changing the Subject, Henry James, Dred Scott, and Fictions of Identity by Sarah B. Blair. Maintaining that man is a legal creation, female is a legal creation, male is a legal creation. All of these things are legal concepts given to you that you can accept to alter your identity and maintain you as a fiction. Once you buy into the concept, you get to buy all the rights and benefits that come along with that while they still hold your inheritance. You are no longer the heir under the doctrine of election. From Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, election. The exercise of a choice, especially the act of choosing from several possible rights or remedies in a way that precludes or takes away the use of other rights or remedies. Number two, the doctrine by which a person is compelled, compelled, forced to choose between accepting a benefit under a legal instrument and retaining some property right to which the person is already entitled. You already had it before you elected to drop it and, and patronize another landlord semicolon, an obligation imposed on a party to choose between alternative rights or claims so that the party is entitled to enjoy only one. You either get a right or a benefit. You're not going to get both. From Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition again, beneficiary, a person for whose benefit property is held in trust, especially one designated to benefit from an appointment, disposition, or assignment. Beneficium in Roman law, a privilege, remedy, or benefit granted by law, such as a beneficium abstinendi, or the privilege of abstaining, by which an heir could refuse to accept an inheritance and thereby avoid their accompanying debt. 
at least generally for life, given by a ruler or a lord to a free man. You're no longer a free man if you're a beneficiary. For, so for all of those that are asking me, what about my social security? I will ask you, what about your inheritance? What about what they have stolen from you while they give you a stripend? Stop electing this under the doctrine of elections. Get back into community. Protect each other. Save each other. And hold them accountable for stealing everything of yours. You have been put into fear regarding the liability attached to your estate. You have none. You have absolutely none. Congress has been taking loans out on your body, Jesus. And what has happened is that each time it overruns this and it can't compensate for what it's lost to other entities that it's taking the loans from, it goes into bankruptcy. And therefore, what is happening is the judges, their judges, this is them, or the magistrates, the E-Forbes, are offsetting congressional bankruptcy by putting you in the chute. 28 U.S.C. subsection 453, oaths of justices and judges. Each justice or judge of the United States shall take the following oath or affirmation before, before performing the duties of his office. I, blank, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will administer justice, that's justification by the way, without respect to persons, and do equal right to the poor and to the rich, and that I will faithfully and impartially discharge, discharge, and perform all the duties incumbent upon me as blank under the Constitution and laws of the United States. So help me God. They are worshiping another God, first of all. They're discharging congressional bankruptcy by putting you in the chute and telling you that you don't want the liability of your state. There is no liability left on your state. You have no debt whatsoever until you consent to being a debtor in order to offset congressional bankruptcy. These individuals are depraved. They're absolutely morally depraved. You are not bankrupt. They're bankrupt. But you have to realize who you are and stand. Jesus said stand. You have to be resurrected. They never said that Jesus was coming back from the dead or reincarnate. It is to be resurrected. You need to stand. Stand again. Stand up. All together this time. Stop allowing Jesus to be crucified on that cross. That can only happen if you're made secular and separate from each other. Come back to the one. You are Jesus. We are Jesus. I am the United States of being. I am. Which brings us right back to Matthew 23, 12, or 13, which is when you were screaming at them the first time. Okay? But woe unto you, scribes, writers, and Pharisee attorneys, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore you shall receive the greater damnation. What does that mean? Well, they've shut up the kingdom of heaven. How have they done that? They've claimed your inheritance and told you that it was theirs. They perverted all of these words and told you that you seceded from England when in fact, in reality, Congress has seceded your estates. They've taken them over. And then they taught you to patronize them. What about the long prayers? Oh, they blather on and on and on and on and on in their addresses. They blather on and on and on and on in the media, which is the scribes. And they tell you all these perverted things about your word. It has nothing to do with your word. What they're presented is consensus reality, maintaining that you will believe, believe, which means be left. You've, you're gone from the self. You have no idea who you are. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him twofold more the child of heaven than yourselves. They're putting you through hell. They're crucifying you through the action of law. You'll be attacked for, for morality, which is meta, psychology, which is soma, and veta, which is law, or legal implication. You'll be criminalized. You'll be told to pay taxes to this father that's taken your estate. What the heck? You're paying taxes for them to represent you or present you another way. And you were so pissed off. Come on, 1 Corinthians 6. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? 
And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? If then you have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed than the church. Stop buying into this indoctrination of Christianity. That was not Christianity. That was not what Jesus said. If then you have judgments of things pertaining to this life, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. Don't go into that courtroom. I speak to your shame. Is it so that there is not a wise man among you? Are you so daft that you don't realize you have to be the judge? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren, but brother goeth to law be with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because you go to law with another. Why do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? For a short amount of time, by the way. Nay, you do wrong and defraud and not your brethren. Know you not that unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye that, that, that are washed, but you're sanctified, but you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. How are you sanctified? Repent. Once you know how they own your body, get out of it and stop patronizing this thing. I want to go down further into 1 Corinthians 6 because I want you to see something so profound. 1 Corinthians, Corinthians 6, 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly and belly for the meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. That means you can only fornicate by giving your body to the Lord. You can only fornicate by giving your body to the Lord God. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his own power. That is you. You have delegated your authorities to somebody to represent you. You've vested power in that authority. And look what it's doing. Look at how it's crucifying you. Jesus. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a, a harlot is one body? For two saith he, he shall be one flesh. But he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. You are joined with that other father. He can manipulate it, you any way that he wants to because you're allowing it. You're consenting to these things. And you are not judging these matters on your own. You are not taking up your authority. You are not standing up and saying, hey, this stuff stops now. This shit stops now. Remember that crap about them granting you liberty or palatine? Comes directly from palatinus in Latin, of the palace or of the Caesars. You're allowing them to seize you. What was said about that? Render under Caesar what is Caesar's and under God what is God's? Take your body back. It is God's. Stop allowing it to go to Caesar. The Caesar of all things. The Constitution of the United States, Article 1. All legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States, which shall consist in a, of a Senate and House of Representatives. Well, there you go, folks. You have delegated your authority. And God both hath, hath both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his own power. Divest divest this power you've granted divest title and take up your own authority you are the judge you are the father stop patronizing something else so to recap you have been deemed dead supposed to be dead because you're in law the etymology of law Law, ordinance, rule, regulation, district, governed by the same laws from Old Norse, lagu, law, collective plural of lag, layer, measure, stroke.
literally something laid down or fixed. Sure as heck doesn't mean resurrected, does it, or standing. It means laid down. You are laying down. Stand up. Judge your own matters. Do not be brought under the power of any. Stop fornicating with the Lord God and giving it your body. Stop laying down and simply stand up. And I'd like to read more from the Sister Kivai Act because there's hope in this. There is absolute hope in that you realize who you are. From part four, if the supposed dead man proved to be alive, then the title is revested, Action for Mean Profits with Interest. Provided always that if any person or persons or person shall be evicted out of any lands or tenements by virtue of this act and afterwards of such person or persons upon whose life or lives such estates or estates depend shall return again from beyond the seas, or shall be on proof in any action be brought for recovery of the same to be made appear to be living or to have been living at the time of the eviction that then and from thenceforth the tenant or lessee who is out outed at the same time his or their executors administrators or assigned shall or may re-enter repossesses have hold and enjoy the said lands or tenements in his or, her, or their former estate for and during the lives or, or lives of so long terms as the said person or person upon whose life or lives the said estate or estates depend shall be living and also shall upon action or actions to be brought by him or them against the lessors or reversioners or tenants in possession or other persons respectively which since the time of the said eviction received the profits of the said lands or tenements recover for damages the full profits of the said lands or tenements respectively with lawful interest for and from the time that he or they were outed of the said lands or tenements and kept or held out of the same by the said lessers, reversioners, tenants, or other persons who after the said evict eviction received the profits of the said lands or tenements or any of them respectively as well in the case when the said person or persons upon whose lives or lives such estates or did depend or are or and are or shall be dead at the time of bringing of said action or actions as if the said person or persons were then living what this means is come back stop appearing before them stop adhering to their laws stop being in their law stop adhering to man's law just exactly like jesus said stop going to court stop patronizing it stop giving it your body and telling it it can represent you and call you dead it calls you all sorts of things man woman female male mother father individual feminist masculist zion Islamism, I mean everything is a means of redistributing your estate. They're saying that on these insurance claims that you've bumped into them, their vessel, they found you, and they're claiming on this. And I'll go into the birth record in just one moment, but please, please, please realize, just stand. Just stand. We sued them. We won. We overruled them because we didn't enter into their courts. We didn't ask them to do anything. We told them what to do. They didn't want to do it. So eventually we had to declare them dead. We had no other option because they never appeared as be living entities. They are all fictions. And according to their own law, where truth is, fiction of law does not exist. By 1802, Congress was in so much debt that they had to find a new way of taking you and fining you, whereby they indemnified you under the insurance claims and created all these commissions and these commission states have been holding you as prisoners of war ever since by 1864 with the geneva convention of 1864 they created foundling hospitals to find you and make it easier for them to take you because now you're entering into their hospitals their foundling places and you're registering your babies on a birth record the baby's foot is on that record that's the keel of the vessel or bottom of the vessel that foot is then sealed by their state seal that means they have taken you the baby as a slave under the laws of war or the rules of war this insurance schematic is called bottomry from black's law first edition bottomry in maritime law a contract in the nature of a mortgage or dead pledge by which the owner of a ship borrows money for the use, equipment, or repair of the vessel and for a definite term and pledges the ship or the keel or bottom of the ship, pars pro toto, 
as a security for its repayment with maritime or extraordinary interest on account of the mar marine risks to be borne by the lender, it being stipulated that if the ship be lost in the course of the specified voyage or during the limited time by any of the perils enumerated in the contract, the lender shall also lose his money. So what they're doing is they're cashing in on your estate. They know this. You're bumping into it. Your vessel. You're putting your vessel onto their docks, basically. And I'll show you this in one moment. Bottomry is a contract by which a ship or its freightage, freightage is hypothecated as security for a loan, which is to be repaid only in case the ship survives a particular risk, voyage, or period of time. Okay. Now, hypothecation. From Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, the letter A, number one, a hypothetical person, a baby boy or a baby girl, is born alive. Now, this means that you're away from life, alive. The letter A signifies away from in Latin. Now, the letter A, a hypothetical person, a Deeds Black Acre. From Black's Law Dictionary, first edition, Black Acre and White Acre. Fictitious names applied to pieces of land and used as examples in the old books. Books. These are books of, of monetary values, bankers' books, law, uh, ledgers. Now, after that birth record is, of course, the docking instrument or birth certificate. This is sent off to the U.S. Department of State which is the clearinghouse to offset those debts on the ledger, on the books. Definition of clearinghouse for Merriam-Webster again. One, an establishment maintained by banks for settling mutual claims and accounts. So they're clearing those books, aren't they? That's the clearinghouse, the Secretary of State. So for those that will still come and, and ask me, should I send my birth certificate into my Secretary of State? Hell no. No, they already have it. That's the clearinghouse. They've declared you dead. You're bankrupt. You're allowing your babies to be declared depraved and bankrupt. They don't know themselves. You're claiming that Christian name, the family name, the new genus and subspecies, and it's already there at the clearinghouse. How do you get it back out? If the supposed dead man proved to be alive, then the title is revested. Action for mean profits with interest, according to the Sestra Kivai Act. Stop claiming that family name the new genus you are not that thing you are the united states of being or i am come in as such that is what my process is all about the forgiveness doc obliterates that franchise called liberty it obliterates the ability for them to be able to do that and takes it over it's a hostile takeover then you have the executor doc you come in as the executor of that estate don't let it out of your hands now, earlier we went into the judicial oath to offset congressional bankruptcy. Everybody needs to realize that the whole of Title 28 Judiciary and Judicial Procedure was enabled by acts of Congress, of course. Okay, and this says this again in the Constitution, yada yada. Um, part 1, Organization of the Court. Part 2, Department of Justice. And we'll click on that. Okay, so Department of Justice. Under the Department of Justice is the Attorney Generals, the FBI, United States Attorneys, United States Marshal Service, United States Trustees, Independent Counsel, and Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives. Now, what this means is that in order to offset congressional bankruptcy through the judicial oaths, they're going to throw you under the bus. How are they going to do that? They're going to criminalize you. They're going to take you into the psychological industry, the medical industry, and even, and not uh, excluding, the death industry. From Bloomberg.com, death derivatives emerge from pension risks of living too long. You're a risk. They don't want to lose all that money, so bye, see ya. Which, of course, goes back to the 1947 National Security Act of Congress. And now let's come forward to April 24, 1974. Dr. Henry Kissinger proposed in his memorandum to the National Security Council that depopulation should be the highest priority of U.S. foreign policy towards the third world. He quoted reasons of national security and because the U.S. economy will require large 
and increasing amounts of material, minerals from abroad, especially from less developed countries. Whenever, wherever a lessening of population can increase the prospects for such stability, population po policy becomes relevant to resources, supplies, and to the economic interests of the United States Incorporated. The targeting agency <coughs> excuse me, for the operation is the National Security Council's ad hoc group on population policy. Its policy planning group is in the U.S. State Department's Office of Population Affairs, established by in 1975 by Henry Kissinger. Okay, so you are being depopulated. This is not coming. It already is. You just don't see it because it's very, very quiet. The etymology on injury is from in, meaning not opposite of, plus iris right or law so you're being brought into law every time you're injured you're not being harmed you're being injured and what this does is allows or enables the congress to cash in on everything that happens to you everything in your court system in your court cases you see the case management system or cms that is not the correct wording it is actually the centers for medicare and medicaid services this is through the World Health Organization uh, International Classification of Diseases and Disorders, or ICD-9, 10, 11, whatever one that's in play as per market conditions. And let me show you. From the ICD-10 version, of course, uh, we could be injured pedestrians injured in transport accident, pedal cyclists injured in transport accident, occupant of pickup or truck or van injured in transport accident. You see these numbers here, V50, V59, V01, V09. Um, all of these things are the way that they're cashing in on your estate. This is how they're claiming these insurance claims. Falls, exposure to inanimate mechanical forces. So if a log falls on your head, the judge or court is cashing in on this stuff. Okay, this is how they cash in on your death and maintain these death derivatives. Assault, um, intent, places of occurrence. So they have codes for home, boarding house, caravan, farmhouse, home premises, nursing home, old people's home, pensioners home, prison reform, school, school, campus, cinema. Everything you can imagine is codified and you are being maintained as a perpetual servant to offset congressional bankruptcy by the International Classification of Diseases and Disorders. And that was all the death codes. Now let's go to the inception. Pregnancy. Delivery. Delivery is an injury. Your diagnosis is being delivered. Multiple births. Spontaneous delivery. Spontaneous delivery means a normal actual delivery. Come on, they're cashing in on everything under insurance. This is you. This is how the Lord God tricks you out and, and uh, perpetrates all of this against you. This is Congress, your transgressor, perpetrating against you. They're a criminal enterprise. Let me show you. From Black's Law Dictionary, first edition, Confederacy. In criminal law, the association or banding together of two or more persons for the purpose of committing an act of furthering an enterprise which is forbidden by law or which the lawful in itself becomes unlawful when made the object of the confederacy. Conspiracy is a more technical term for this offense. The act of two or more who combine together to do any damage or injury to another to do an unlawful act. In international law, a league or agreement between two or more independent states whereby they unite for their mutual welfare and the furtherance of their common aims. The term may apply to a union so formed for a temporary or limited purpose, as in the case of an offensive and defensive alliance, but it is more commonly used to denote the species of political connection between two or more independent states by which a central government is created. Now, the, the union thing is something so profound. The ACLU is Congress. It, it's the defensive and offensive alliance. So they're putting against each other, making it look like they're protecting you when they're not. Okay? So, uh, between two or more independent states by which a central government is created, invested with certain powers of sovereignty, mostly external, and acting upon the several component states as its units. However, retain their sovereign powers for domestic purposes and some others. See federal government. Hello, Confederacy and the federal government are a criminal enterprise. 
what the heck are we doing allowing this and consenting to it and patronizing this thing? Now we're coming up on a break in just a couple minutes here. So when we get back from the break, we'll delve more into this, go into the media aspect or the hegemonic aspect that contains this thing. Um, you've got three levels of actual government. You have the media on the top, which is a broadcasting board of governors maintained by Congress. You've got insurance right under that, and under that is the court system itself, or the legal system itself. So they have derivatives in everything and in every aspect. You are going to be taught to accept these things through the scribes, priests, and Pharisees, the same entities that Jesus went off on the first time. Now, right now, you can go to the bbg.gov and find in their about section the Broadcasting Board of Governors. BBG is both the name of the independent federal agency that oversees all U.S. civilian international media and the name of the board that governs these broadcasts. I want everybody to go there and pay special attention to whom is on that board. John Forbes Carey is on the board of broadcasting, the board of governors of the BBG. He is also the Secretary of State or Clearinghouse to offset congressional bankruptcy. This is the entity that Jesus went off on. This is who he, he espoused woe to. He says, no, you're going to stop this crap. You're going to stop it right now. This is ridiculous. Look at what you are allowing and consenting in your own places. This is your house. You need to step out of their house, the House of Representatives, and get into your own house immediately. And we'll be right back after this commercial break. Take us home, take us home, take us home, take us home. Welcome back to Leaving the Farm right here only on Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. Don't forget to catch the Samsung Report tonight at 10 p.m. on Studio B right here at Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. And please remember, we're a listener-supported station. If you like what you're hearing and you want to keep us on the air, please go to our Support Us page and donate to the station. And we're going to get right into the relationship between the Broadcasting Board of Governors and what you see presented on the television programming, by the way, and what is actual reality. This last week on FoxNews.com, that 70s show star Lisa Robin Kelly died at 43. In this report, the actress died in a rehab facility and her cause of death is still unknown. The photos presented to you make her look crazy, right? There's a reason for that. There's every imaginable mental and behavioral disorder in the ICD-10. Organic dementia, vascular dementia, mental and behavioral disorder due to psychoactive substance use, schizophrenia, mood affective disorders, neurotic, stress-related, and somatoform disorders. So remember, she was injured here when she was born. She went through her whole life being diagnosed as various things under ICD-10. She was diagnosed at the end with some kind of drug addiction. And all of that time, she was a prostitute for Congress, offsetting congressional debt and bankruptcy. And at her death, it's another diagnosis. There are death derivatives related to this, as well as her estate. Her estate will be raised through the use of legal process called probate, which is unlawful on its face. From inception to extension, this human being was used through every variant on legal aspect, medical, psychological, and criminal. And now she's dead. A human being, one of us, one of our own, is dead. And this is laid squarely on the shoulders of Congress. We spoke about the Charter of Forest and Chases earlier. 
and many of you will not come to terms with the fact that you are being deemed as just an animal. You're, you're here on Caesar's farm. I read to you the charters, uh, what the definitions actually mean. And under 7 U.S.C. subsection 136, the definition of animal. The term animal means all vertebrate and invertebrate species, including but not limited to man and other mammals, birds, fish, and shellfish. So it's just based on injury. You're part of Caesar's Farm Colony. From the Office of Medical and Scientific Justice, OMSJ, who is charged with pushing vaccines that harm children? It's not who. Wrap your mind around this one. It is the Congress, through the use of the uh, Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, with agreements with the Ethics Commission. Ethics and fee means to kill the fee. Remember, you're the fee in a fiefdom. I'm going to read you from the Rules of Procedure of the Freeburg's Ethics Commission International, or FICI. This is the Revised Rules of 2006, the most current I can find. This is the most current FICI, by the way. It's always been since the inception of politics, which means to control or possess many. The Freeburg Ethics Commission International, or FICI, was founded in 1980 and is oriented on the United States Review Boards. Since its inception, Fiji has reviewed and provided expert opinions for clinical studies using human test subjects. After more than 25 years of existence, the Fiji has achieved a national and international reputation for professionalism. Professionalism when they're using human test subjects. Very, very economically efficient, isn't it? According to the National Security Policy, National Security Council, and the Office of Population Policy maintained at the State Department to offset congressional bankruptcy. The expert opinions prepared for a clinical study is based on the current editions of the recommendations, the recommendations, remember, of the Revised World Medical Association's Declaration of Helsinki, the directives and guidelines of the European Union, and the regulations or laws of the United States Food and Drug Administration, or FDA. Additionally, the current laws and regulations in Germany and all other countries in which the clinical study is to be conducted are also an inherent part of this basis. But the main perpetrator is FDA. It's written right here in front of you. Now, of all of these fun diseases and disorders, every aspect of humanity, everything is diagnosed. Part of the diagnosis is the means to get there. What makes you sick? The FDA. It offers you a food pyramid, tells you what to eat that makes you sick so that they can cash in on the back end. The FDA approves all of these medications that kill you and allows you to be human test subjects on behalf of Congress to offset congressional bankruptcy and make sure that attorneys never go hungry. Corporations never go hungry. This is a corporate welfare theorem. You are an animal and you are being maintained to generate revenue into their coffers. They have a section B95 through B98 and B99 through B99 of bacterial, viral, and other infectious agents. Now, they give you this. They admitted to this in the 1999 uh, anthrax hearings. You can find those on Yale. One of the most profound usages of diagnosis is the use of shock doctrine against children. From CNN.com, newly revealed conspiracy claim in Princess Diana Death Sparks Talk. In this report, Sunday people said it had been it had seen a seven-page handwritten letter by the in-laws alleging that the soldier, whom the newspaper did not name, had boasted to his wife and the elite British Special Air Service Commando unit that the U elite British Special Air Service Commando unit was behind the deaths of uh, Diana and her boyfriend. And what this does is the implication of shock against the children. As you know, it's been 16 years. What happened to those children? As they grew up, one of them went into the military, as far as I know, and it just goes from there. Okay, when you're shocked like this, you have to rely on a different father. And he certainly did, right? Since the Magna Carta, the crown has been taken, and of course the crown was taken again. All of them 
in the 1941 Atlantic Charter entered into by President Roosevelt of the United States Incorporated as well as um, Churchill, Winston Churchill, who at that time was the Prime Minister of UK. They gave con Congress global governance in the 1941 Atlantic Charter. What this means for the Crown or anybody related to Diana, for example, is that the courtesy estate that was designed and maintained under constructive trust of Diana's doesn't go anywhere, does it? From factruth.com, five-month-old baby dies just eight days after eight vaccinations. Parents are charged with her murder. Parents in South Africa are facing life in prison for the murder of the baby girl who died just days after receiving routine vaccinations. That's the plan. But now who is being charged with pushing vaccines that harm children? The FDA knows all about this. They're still promoting this as a form of democracy or democratic theory. As they enter into all these countries, raise them to the ground, enter into their codified states, and the attorneys are cashing in on all of the injury related to these vaccines that, harm, that are harming children. From MiamiHerald.com, at DCF, an untold epi epidemic of abuse, neglect, and death. Again, Child Protective Services, Department of Children and Families, is a tool or mechanism to be employed against children, against adults, against everybody in order to generate revenue into the attorney coffers by the use of ICD-9, ICD-10. These are all under diagnoses. The judge diagnoses the child, CPS diagnoses the child, criminal system diagnoses the father or the mother of abuse or the step parent or the foster parent and they're, they're cashing in on our demise 7 U.S.C. United States Code, subsection 136, says that you're all animals on Caesar's farm. From KWTX.com, jailed foster mother indicted for capital murder. Brockdale, August 14, 2013, two weeks after a two-year-old died while living in a Rockdale home, the Millam County Grand Jury handed up a capital murder indictment Thursday against the child's foster mom. Cheryl Small, 54, was arrested this month on a warrant charging murder and remains in the Millam County Jail in lieu of a $100,000 bond. Jail records showed. The child, Alexandria Hill, too, died in, at Scott and White's McLean Children's Hospital after she was taken off the life support. Small's arrest affidavit said she became frustrated with Alexandria, picked her up, and in a downward motion with a lot of force, came down towards the ground with her. She did this twice, and on the third time she lost her grip, and the victim was thrown to the ground head first. At McLean's emergency room, the affidavit says doctors found that the toddler had subdermal hemorrhaging, subarachnoid hemorrhaging, and retinal hemorrhaging in both eyes. The affidavit said the Rockdale police said they have a statement from Small's biological daughter who said she was neglected as a child and removed from Small's custody by Child Protective Services. Everything that the hospital diagnosis child with, these attorneys are cashing in on in order to offset congressional bankruptcy. The child's death will be cashed in on and death derivatives maintained to discharge congressional debt through the judiciary. The bank, which is the court, just charged the foster mother with the death of this child. They'll be cashing in on the rent for this child's body through legal process. If you want to get off of this farm, please visit chooseyourside.org and click on our resource pages so you can know thyself and know how to stop patronizing this thing that's murdering us and slaughtering us in droves. For Mooders.com, Syria gas kills hundreds. Security Council meets. The National Security Council has a program to initiate depopulation across the globe, as we went over earlier with Dr. Henry Kissinger's mandates. When you're looking at the mainstream media and you're seeing all of these deaths occurring, you do not realize, or up until now, you did not realize that this is Congress. This is the actions of Congress killing our children. This is another 1,300 babies 
our babies being murdered to generate revenue to attorneys. To attorney means to go to another landlord. They have another god. They worship another god. They are your adversary. That is what Satan is, your adversary. From news.com.au, sex predator was a ticking time bomb. A violent sex predator released from prison on a government supervision order continually breached the conditions without any punishment in the weeks before raping another woman. They are renting us. I'm a, I'm a female. They are renting my vagina. Every time they charge somebody for use of my body, they are renting my vagina. Every time they charge somebody for use of a child's body, they are renting their child's body. Stop this. A judge is cashing in on every aspect of humanity. These attorneys are cashing in on us. Us. This is us and our babies. We don't have a natural predator. We have now a predator maintained and developed by legal process called the attorney and the judge. The attorney in the black dress. From WNEP.com, pre-sentence for sexually abusing boy. This priest was just charged by the bank for use of the child. And the child is now diagnosed, generating revenue into attorney pockets. It is time for everybody to stand up and practice compassionate justice, removal of all harm from communities. And I know that sounds like it's a mean thing to do, but nobody should be cashing in on my body, your body, baby's bodies, or anything other. You stop the psychopath from abusing, you remove it from the community and the ability to harm you and others. You don't wait around and let somebody cash in on your demise. This is sick. August 23rd, 2013, FDA warning, acetaminophen linked to fatal skin reactions. These diagnoses are located in Chapter 12 of Diseases of the Skin and Subcutaneous Tissue, L00 through L99. From ACLU.org, the ACLU, or American Civil Liberties Union, of course, is an arm of the Confederate state. ACLU launches nationwide investigation into police use of military technology and tactics. Now, when they beat the hell out of somebody or injure them in some way, of course, they're being brought into law. That's another means of cashing in by the action of assault. Again, you're just an animal. They're little minions, cops, FBI agents, everything else that are directed by policy are injuring you or bringing you into law the, at the behest of Congress. Although police officers, law enforcement usually believe that they're actually fixing things. They believe that they're not doing anything wrong. They believe that they are law enforcement enforcing laws when in reality they're only enforcing corporate policy. And this has to stop. This is the first and second welfare theorem at work. Toddler survives smallpox vaccine reaction, as found on Reuters.com. As reported, the Indiana toddler developed a rare rash known as eczema vaccinatum after playing with his father, a soldier vaccinated for deployment in Iraq, reported Dr. John Marcinak of the University of Chicago and CDC experts. Okay, so he's a ticking time bomb. He's going to be deployed overseas, and he's going to perpetrate smallpox um, at the behest of Congress because he's forced to get these vaccinations. They're going to be injured and diagnosed through corporate policy, and Congress is again going to cash in on all of this. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are across the globe. Congress has had global governance since 1941. They're propagating democratic theory, which means to control or possess people through the action of politics, which means to control and possess many. It's time to stand up. It is time to find yourself, know yourself, and your authority and govern yourself. Stop asking them to represent you because they're cashing in on everything. From the DailyMilk.co.uk, how social services are paid bonuses to snatch babies for adoption. This comes right out of Congress. That is the CAPTA. CAPTA stands for Child Abuse Prevention and Treatment Act, meaning you're going to be diagnosed, so we might as well rent you out, right? Rent you to these courts and attorneys. Every time you're tricked out, every time you're adopted, we'll give you funding in order to put you into foster care and adoption facilities and youth groups. 
that will abuse these children in order for them to be diagnosed. These children will be killed. These children will suffer and suffer and suffer at the hands of these monsters. And if you do not stand up now, it continues on and on and on and on because you are funding it by patronizing this thing. From alternate.org, shocking numbers of sex trafficking victims come out of foster care. L.A. Congresswoman Karen Boss is leading push for supportive services for teenage victims instead of pushing them into the criminal justice system where they can be twice victimized. Now, she's one of the ones that are cashing in, but she's going to point out a little problem, a little problem, in order to develop a new program that you will pay for, that they will cash in on, to prevent them from abusing your children. From WLWT.com, the state failed her. Mom of woman accused in toddler's death, says. Janisha Cottingham, 23, was arrested late Thursday and charged with aggravated murders at hours after Robin Cottingham's body was found in her Bowling Green Court home by a Cincinnati Metropolitan Housing Authority maintenance employee. The girl's father, Robert Mydell, said he and Cottingham had asked the Hamilton County Department of Job and Family Services to take care of Robin because he lost his job and Cottington didn't want to care for her. Cottington's mother told reporters Friday that she tried to take the toddler back to Georgia with her within the last two weeks, but Job and Family Services wouldn't allow it. They're not going to allow it. They're paid to do this. They're paid to murder children and cash in on these things. I will show you. In 1802, with the Indemnification Convention, they indemnified all of us and made us responsible for their debt once again. Each county has an appropriations committee or council. To appropriate means to take a to make a thing one's own, to make a thing the object of a property, to exercise dominion over an object to the extent and for the purpose of making it subserves one's own proper use or pleasure. The term is properly used in the sense to denote the acquisition of property and a right of exclusive enjoyment in those things which before were just were without an owner or a public jurist. Now, your appropriations committee goes in and it appropriates or takes tracts of land and says this is the amount of funding we need in order to develop it or to do whatever they're going to do, repair it, whatever they're going to do. The next step is the county commission's hand in this. From Black Slot Dictionary First Edition Commission, a warrant or authority of letter or letters patent issuing from the government or one of its departments or a court empowering a person or person's name to do certain acts or to exercise jurisdiction or to perform the duties and exercise the authority in, of an office, as is the case of an officer in the Army or Navy. Job and family services are under the Board of County Commissioners or Corporate Council in other areas. However, in Hamilton County, it is the Board of County Commissioners that direct policy and may tell everybody else what to do. The commissioners are Greg Hartman, Chris Monzel, and Tard Partoon. A couple of years ago, I had the opportunity to communicate with Tard Partoon when a, an attorney by the name of Patricia Boss was tricking a family out by a court process and allowing a father to be falsely accused of sexual abuse and abuse of everybody in order for the county board of commissioners to cash in on the diagnosis not only of his daughter at the time, but also of the uh, female that was involved that was being used as a tool in this system just as much as this mother who recently murdered that child. She's a tool of politics. She did not like children. She did not want children, and she was telling them this. She wanted that child away from her, and the Board of County Commissioners decided, no, it's more profitable if that child is murdered at her hands. They knew what was going to happen, and they're gamers, and they game this. I lay this squarely on the head of Todd Partoon, Chris Monzel, and Greg Hartman. Todd Partoon is the president of the County Bo uh, Commission, there, the Board of Commissioners. So everybody needs to look directly and squarely at the murder of this child. From cbc.ca, Native Canadian women sold on U.S. ships, researcher said. The report says First Nations women from Thunder Bay, Ontario, trafficked in sex trade in Minnesota. Now this applies to all known treaties. Each treaty granted territories, which is you, the human body, 
to offset congressional bankruptcy. In this, they did this according to the trade routes. And if you look at the Northwest Passage, for example, everything west of the Mississippi, you look at the Treaty of Peace, you look at the Treaties of Versailles, these are all along trade routes in order to traffic human beings inside and outside of the United States Incorporated on a daily basis and as well as through the legal process. The legal process actually traffics more human beings than any other. However, outside of that process is actual physical removal of women, children from inside and without the United States Incorporated, especially when the UN goes in to save refugees. These refugees are trafficked on the open market. These reports are located in the UN Report on Human Trafficking of 2009 where it stipulates that females are the main perpetrator of child sex trafficking, female sex trafficking, and the male slave labor market. I urge everybody to read that report. From PressTV.ir, British MP, Israel provides terrorists in Syria with chemical weapons. That is not the truth. This is Congress that's doing this, Congress that's maintaining this through its UN pogrom. Uh, pogrom means a eugenics uh, tool by which people can be slaughtered to the betterment of national security and policy maintained under congressional action, which again is a confederacy and a criminal enterprise. From CNN.com today, bus carrying Army Reserve troops overturns in North Carolina. 28 hurt. <clears throat> a bus carrying Army Reserve soldiers overturned Friday afternoon in North Carolina, seriously injuring one person and leaving at least 27 others with minor injuries, the state public safety department said. Okay, 28 people have been brought into law. Courts are going to cash in on this. And these sheeple are patriots. The, of course, they're with the National Reserve, so they're relying on their other daddy to protect them. They're being protected to death, just like everybody else is prisoners of war under the 1929 Geneva Convention. Officers are also prisoners of war, according to the 1929 Geneva Convention, and they're being used to offset congressional bankruptcy. Again, from CNN.com, lawsuit. Police videotape DUI suspects undressing using the toilet. This occurred in Puyallup, Washington. Now, these victims are going to be diagnosed as victims. The perpetrator will be diagnosed as perpetrator. But you have to see the back end on this one because the state is cashing in all around. From 27 CFR 72.11, that's 27 Code of Federal Regulations 72.11 for commercial crimes. Any of the following types of crimes, federal or state. Offenses against the revenue laws. Okay, they haven't harmed anybody. They're harming the revenue laws. Burglary, counterfeiting, forgery, kidnapping, larceny, robbery, illegal sale or possession of deadly weapons, prostitution, including soliciting, procuring, pandering, white slaving, keeping house of ill fame, and like offenses. Extortion, swindling, and confidence games, which means gambling, and attempting to commit, conspiring to commit, or compounding any one of the foregoing crimes. Addiction to narcotic drugs and use of marijuana will be treated as if such were a commercial crime. So every time you're nailed with a DUI or just in case crime, this is a commercial crime. And what they're doing is they're saying, well, you have too much money, so we're going to take some off of you because you're not giving us our cut. They're offenses against the revenue laws. So for you, all you patriots out there, you can not only be charged for offenses against the revenue laws, you can be raped molested and otherwise injured in the process so you have a choice right now right now you can choose your side you can either continue to patronize that thing or you can stand up and self-govern and patronize your own house you need to get out of the house of representatives because that's where you live right now you are a prisoner of all war under corporate government Corporations are cashing in. You are maintaining corporate welfare under the first and second welfare theorem. And this is how it works. Here's an interesting one from, again, CNN.com. New York City City Council overrides Bloomberg on police measures. City Council Speaker Christine Quinn, one of the candidates leading New York City's hotly contested mayoral race, won a major victory over outgoing Mayor Michael Bloomberg with the council's override on a mayoral veto of Quinn v. 
bill establishing an inspector general for the NYPD. Okay, you know that that uh, Bloomberg's going to go out, right? Unless you guys stop this. Because what's happening is something that you have no clue of until now. Now, the Inspector General Act of 1978 brought everything back down into seven um, different chutes or avenues for these monies to go. The Department of Energy, Department of Transportation, everything else. What that is is, is the banking instrument of where these funds are going. Let me show you. In 1802, with the Indemnification Convention, it created five commission states. Only five. From there, it grew and grew and grew and grew and grew. And there was a Department of Education, Department of Commerce, Department of Energy, Department of Transportation. In 78, all of this came back down into a few. Okay. Now we have the Federal Transparency Board, or the Government Accountability and Transparency Board, implemented recently but it just moves everything into a smaller and smaller administrative capacity so that you know the dumbasses that don't know they're tricking out children or the useful idiots they don't know what's going on but these administrators do part of the 1978 inspector general's act was the insurance backing the human product under the federal uh, deposit insurance corporation so it allowed you to be backed even further through the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation and that allows uh, more hedging, more hedging on the bet. So every year your productivity is projected. You know this is the GDP, okay? And every year there's a spread that you need to cover. If you're not producing as expected, they cover that spread with hedge funds, municipal hedge funds. Now all of this is banking. Remember the court is a bank, the International Court of Justice is a bank, all of this is banking. You are the negotiable instrument. So back to that story about the uh, mayoral race and everything else in New York City. It's all crap. This is one hand waving while the other hand is raising you and your families. From PCWorld.com Is Windows 8 a Trojan horse for the NSA? The German government thinks so. The German government is now deeply suspicious that the trusted platform model TPM technology built into a growing numbers of Windows 8 PCs and tablets is creating a gigantic backdoor to for NSA surveillance leaked documents have suggested. Now stop right there. In 1947, Congress came in with the National Security Act. Congress is the parent to the National Security Agency, National Security Council, depopulation program of course is spying on you that's its function it wants to know everything you're doing the computer is actually the silent weapons for quiet wars if maintained in its use the way that it was made it's designed to keep you busy you're playing Facebook and Farmville and everything else and all these games you're too busy to pay attention to your neighbor next door who's being raped raised and slaughtered by uh, national security policy this keeps you busy it's a silent weapon you can find a copy of the Silent Weapons for Quiet Wars on lawfulpath.com from this document. The Economic Model Ec Economics as a Social Energy Science has a, a first objective, the description of the complex way in which any given unit of resources is used to satisfy some economic want. The first objective, when it is extended to get the most product from the least or limited resources, compromises that objective of general military and industrial logistics known as operations research. Now we'll stop right there and go to Pareto's rule, or Pareto's principle. The Pareto principle, <clears throat> also known as the 80-20 rule, the law of vital few and the principle of factor sparsity, states that for many events roughly 80 percent of the effects come from 20 percent of the causes in economics the original observation was in connection with population and wealth Pareto noticed that 80 percent of Italy's land was owned by 20 percent of the population he then carried out surveys on a variety of other countries and found to his surprise that a similar distribution applied Due to the scale and variant nature of the power law relationship, the relationship applies also to subsets of income groups, uh, income ranges. Even if we take the 10 wealthiest individuals in the world, we see that the top three, 
Carlos, Hilo, Warren Buffett, and Bill Gates own as much as the next seven pit put together. Descriptive Introduction of the Silent Weapon Everything that is expected from an ordinary weapon is expected from a silent weapon by its creators, but only in its own manner of functioning. It shoots situations instead of bullets, propelled by data processing instead of chemical reaction or explosion, originating from bits of data instead of grains of gunpowder, from a computer instead of a gun, operated by a computer programmer instead of a marksman, under the orders of a banking magnate instead of a military general. It makes no obvious explosive noises, causes no obvious physical or mental injuries, and does not obviously interfere with anybody's daily social life. Yet it makes an unmistakable noise, causes unmistakable physical and mental damage, and unmistakably interferes with the daily social life, i.e. unmistakable to a trained observer, one who knows what to look for. The public cannot comprehend this weapon and therefore cannot believe that they are being attacked and subdued by a weapon. The public might instinctively feel that something is wrong, but that is because of the technical nature of the silent weapon. They cannot express their feeling in a rational way or handle the problem with intelligence. Therefore, they do not know how to cry for help and do not know how to associate with others to defend themselves against it. When a silent weapon is applied gradually, the public adjusts, adapts to its presence, and learns to tolerate its encroachment on their lives until the pressure, psychological via economic, becomes too great and they crack up. Therefore, the silent weapon is a type of biological warfare. It attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of the individuals of a society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking their sources of natural and social energy and their physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. Low intensity conflict is the use of military forces applied selectively and with restraint to enforce compliance with policies or objectives of the political body controlling the military force. The term can be used to describe conflicts where at least one or both of the opposing parties operate along such lines. Weapons. As the name suggests, in comparison with conventional operation, the armed forces involved operate at a greatly reduced tempo, with fewer soldiers, a reduced range of tactical equipment, and limited scope to operate in a military manner. For example, the use of air power, pivotal in modern warfare, is often relegated to transport and surveillance. Artillery is often not used when LIC occurs in populated areas. The role of armed forces is dependent on the stage of the insurrection, whether it has progressed to armed struggle or is it, it is in its early stage of propaganda and protests. Which brings us back to the Broadcasting Board of Governors. Again, John Kerry is the clearinghouse. The Secretary of State is the clearinghouse to offset congressional bankruptcy. He's also a member of the Board of Governors of the Broadcasting Board of Governors. At the site, facts about the Smith Month Month Modernization Act. The Broadcasting Board of Governors and the media organizations that it supports can now make their content available in broadcast quality upon request within the United States. This is due to a law that went into effect on July 2, 2013, amending the U.S. Information and Educational Exchange Act of 1948, known as the Smith Month Act. Month Act. Amending Smith Smith Month for this purpose was part of the strategic plan adopted in 2011 by the governing board overseeing the BBG. Now remember that Hillary Clinton was on that board. The Smith Month Modernization Act allows propaganda to be legalized once again. So you are being just bombarded with government propaganda telling you we're the good guys, we're the good guys, you're the bad guys. Come with us, come with us, we're here to protect you. This is all within low intensity conflict. This is all part of the psychological warfare of low intensity conflict. Part of the intelligence of low intensity conflict. Intelligence gathering is essential to an efficient basis of low intensity conflict operation instructions. Electronic and signal gathering intelligence, ELENT and SIGNET, SIGINT proves largely ineffective against low-intensity conflict, low-intensity operations. Low-intensity generally requires more hands-on or human methods of information retrieval. 
human intelligence is gathered by means of interpersonal contact as opposed to the more technical intelligence gathering disciplines such as signals, intelligence, imagery, intelligence, and mass int. NATO defines human as a category of intelligence derived from information called and collected and provided by human sources. So when you're infiltrated and you get some shoes in your groups, they're human and they're usually paid by Federal Bureau of Investigation under the Judiciary Act, of course, through the Department of Justice, allowed by Congress, congressional actions, and maintained through the media, which is the BBG. In the first stages of insurrection, much of the Army's work is soft, working in conjunction with civil authorities in psychological operations, propaganda, counter-organizing, and so-called hearts and minds. Uh, I want to stop there and explain that one because it's so horrifying that you're going to get it in a few minutes and you'll be able to free yourself from this situation. Winning hearts and minds is a concept occasionally expressed in the resolution of war, insurgency, and other conflicts in which one side seeks to prevail not by the use of superior force, but by making emotional or intellectual appeals to sway supporters of the other side. When they take your children by court process, this is hearts and minds. When they're holding you hostage by court process, this is hearts and minds. The use of the term hearts and minds to reference a method of bringing a subjugated population on side was first used during the Malayan emergency by the British who employed practices to keep the Malayans trust and reduce the tendency to side with ethnic Chinese communists. In this case by giving medical and food aid to the Malays and indigenous tribes. Welfare benefits. Social Security Benefits, Veterans Benefits. A British report at the time stated, One impressive result of this campaign has been the extent to which Malay women are now taking part in political and social affairs. Well, first of all, Congress takes my rights, then it sells them back to me, it sells them back to me, and I engage in the political system because I want my rights. Stop doing that. Garner your inheritance, get Congress the hell out of it everywhere, and stop patronizing it. So we'll pause here and get to some calls. Uh, you're listening to Revolution Radio, freedomslips.com. Studio A number is 347-688-2902. And Studio B is 310-421-4053 if you'd like to call. This is Paul, and I uh, haven't yet been able to get back on track with studying material because my computer is still offline. Say that again. I'm sorry? Can you say your name again, please? Paul. Paul. Yeah. From Colorado? Uh, from Pennsylvania. Oh, it's been like months, you mean? I'm sorry? When was the last time I spoke to you? Oh, I remember. And and again, uh, before that, it was like six months, right? Yeah, I think so. But I think that was like the first time I spoke to you when we kind of just talked about a lot of general things. Right. Okay, well, just keep listening to the shows and stuff. I've got, we've upped the ante. Um, I'm also on No Borders Radio in Scotland now. And, um, you know, we're getting more into the original charters and everything. Just keep following and, and keep going forward. But it was great having you call. Thanks for calling. Uh, what was the name of that radio program again? Uh, I'm also on No Borders Radio in Scotland as well as Revolution Radio on freedomslips.com. And so... Did you say No Borders Radio? Yep, yep. Every Saturday um, for... 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on No Borders, um, and then again on from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday on Revolution Radio at freedomslips.com. Do you happen to know the website for the No Borders Radio? Um, it's on the SSOTL website. If you Google SSOTL, you'll find the No Borders uh, website as well. That's the Scottish Sovereigns on the Land website at ning.com. Okay. Okay, thanks for calling. 
Okay, thank you. All right, bye-bye. So we're going to go to the SPLC, the Southern Poverty Law Center now, and take a look at what's going on here because this thing is created by, of course, the National Security Act under Congress. Federal court says sex assignment surgery on trial could violate U.S. Constitution, refuses to dismiss case. For the first time, a federal court has concluded that a medically unnecessary sex assignment surgery on a child with an intersex condition could be a violation of the Constitution. This marks an important step towards in seeking forward in seeking justice for MC, a young man who ha was needlessly subjected to the procedure as an infant in the care of the South Carolina Department of Social Services. Now, contrary to popular belief, this actually happens one in 1,000 births in the United States Incorporated at hospitals everywhere. If a child is born with what appears to be too small of a penis, it will be turned into a clitoris. And if it is a large clitoris, it can be turned into a penis or, or the child can have a penis and be maintained as having a large uh, clitoris until later when the testes drop. And at that point in time, these children are left with identity issues, gender identity issues. And all of this is implicated by such as the Southern Poverty Law Center itself. That's what these attorneys do. They have to injure children in order f to fix it and cash in on all of these diagnoses. The SPLC asked federal court to block Alabama education law that discriminates against poor children. What the hell? The Southern Poverty Law Center is made up of attorneys. These are lawmakers. Now they're arguing against their law that's discriminatory. They're racist. Get them out of your communities. The Southern Poverty Law Center is vilifying everybody. This is a domestic terror cell. And the reason they're doing this is to generate revenue and hide what they're doing. Here's a good one. The attorneys report March for Justice continues on anniversary of Voting Rights Act. Excuse me, but again, Congress took my right to vote then sold it back to me through these attorneys at such as the Southern Poverty Law Center. Now this place is Satan. This this is the uh, den of thieves here. Alabama judge validates mo lesbians mom lesbian mom's visitation rights to her children. The court took her rights to her children away and then sold them back to her. This is not a good thing. This is prostitution. Federal appeals court finds key portions of South Carolina anti and immigration law should be blocked. SPLC case moves forward. Hello, they're the ones implicating the immigration laws. And the reason they do that is they need everybody to be naturalized. You can only be a surety if you're a natural person pledging allegiance to the Congress and representation here. This is a joke. These people need to be shut down. So that's what the Southern Poverty Law Center is. The SPLC is just an arm of the Confederated State in a conspiracy to generate revenue by tricking you out. They're, prostitu they're prostituting and promoting prostitution by taking away your rights so that you have to go into court and buy them back. Shut them down. Get the attorneys out of wherever you are. These people are dangerous. This, this thing is psychopathic. So we'll go visit Rocco Vanzetti's wall from the Bill and Rocco show, as I really like usually what he has to say. He has a quote there from George Carlin, and this is Rocco's interpretation. Getting vaccinations isn't being obedient. It's called subjugation and human trafficking. When you add up all the health care intent, paperwork, congressional spending, and psychological manipulation involved with his final goal, it's just an empire of evil spreading out before the eyes like a teeming culture of bacteria devouring raw living cells. Rocco's music interest for the day, Gordon Lightfoot, if you could read my mind, quote from Rocco, for the NSA, the CIA, and all the other whack jobs out there. From downtrend.com, nine-year-old banned from library contests for winning, learns about liberalism. Rocco says, oh yes we did. If anyone's near Potter Canyon, Colorado, Rocco says he wants a milkshake. Rocco posts from politicalblindspot.com, quote, I felt like a psychopath, end quote. Drone operator says he is haunted by the 1600 he has killed. And he posts a quote, 
quote, the world is changed by your example, not by your opinion, end quote. So if anyone wants to get a hold of Rocco, please go to Rocco Vanzetti, that's R-O-C-K-O-V-A-N-Z-E-T-T-I on Facebook. Or just catch him on the Bowen Rocco Show right here on Revolution Radio, freedomsips.com, every Wednesday night, 10 to 12 Eastern Standard Time, p.m., by the way, only on Revolution Radio. And don't forget, you can find Bo over on YouTube at Bono's Entertainment. He's got the big daddy picture up there, and choose your side, right on his wall. Or you can find us on Free Revolution Radio on YouTube. Look for the Bo and Rocco Show. All of the archives are there every week. Bell's about to ring, so I'm going to leave you with, please support the station. Keep us on there. Go to freedomslips.com. Click on the support us pages. Any little bit helps. Remember, for a $100 donation, you get the um, Jumbo Emergency Food Survival Seed Pack. I mean, look at this thing, folks. You've got uh, tomatoes, 150 seeds. You've got pinto beans, bush beans, kidney beans, lettuce, butter crunch, wheat, sprouting, peas, green peas, cauliflower, snowball, cauliflower, uh, tomato, romas, cucumbers, eggplants, radishes, um, sweet corn, bell pepper, everything you can imagine, anything that you need, all of the vitamins and minerals you can get out of the soil, out of a good location. The above listed 54 varieties of non-GMO, no pesticide seeds, totaling 34,500 seeds in each kit. This kit includes instructions on planting, harvesting, and saving your seeds. Start saving today. Feed your family today and forever while supporting the station at the same time. You also get the bonus DVD for you if you do the $100 donation. Um, in it, you'll learn about bug out bags and clothing, basic repairs, making winter clothing, combat clothing, communications, cooking, disaster preparedness, food, gardening, general, including tool building, Boy Scout handbook, poisonous plant guides, hunting, hygiene, livestock, medical power, shelter, urban skills, um, urban including urban survival and survival checklists, water including constructing a pump water treatment and purification, and wilderness, including including uh, traps and snares, plant identification and navigation. This will help you in any situation, everybody. You need to realize it's not that hard to leave the farm. It is not hard to get off the grid. It is not hard to be self-sustaining. This gives you the opportunity to, to do so right here in this one package just for a simple donation to keep us on the air so that we'll, we can stay here and let you know what's going on.